My name is Tanya Jandron and I'm here today at the Mayo Clinic. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Rosa Rademakers from the Mayo Clinic uh, here in Florida and uh, today we have an ALS symposium. Uh, I'm Lucy Brown, uh, the Chief Scientist for the ALS Association and very excited to be here today and so pleased that we could co-host this um, symposium together with Mayo Clinic. My name is Jacob Ayers and I'm a postdoctoral uh, fellow at the University of Florida in Gainesville. I think it's tremendous to bring all these researchers and to know that there are so many scientists and clinicians both at a Jackson Mayo Clinic and at the University of Florida all focused on this important question of how do we find treatments for ALS for Lou Gehrig's disease and understand the mechanisms behind it. It's been tremendous science that we've heard today. Lots of hope and focus on exactly that, how to bring treatments forward. And I'm very confident that in the near future we will have much better therapies and opportunities for patients living with the disease. About a year ago my laboratory identified uh, one of the most important causes of uh, ALS uh, and also the cause of uh, another related disorder called frontotemporal dementia or FTD. And uh, this new uh, mutation that we found is actually very unique. It's a small piece of DNA that in unhealthy individuals is only uh, repeated a few times, but in uh, patients with ALS and FCD we find that that same little piece of DNA is present hundreds or thousands of times. And uh, this was really a major discovery in the field. Um, and because it turned out that a large percentage of patients with ALS and FTD, about 30% of familial patients with ALS and about 5% of sporadic patients with ALS actually have uh, this particular mutation. So um, because of the fact that so many patients are affected by it, this has really changed the field because everybody wants to understand how it is that this new mutation is causing disease. Um, so not just at Mayo Clinic, but in laboratories around the world, people are now trying to develop cellular models and animal models uh, to further understand um, this mutation and how, it, how it's leading to disease and of course ultimately with the goal to, um, to develop a treatment for this terrible disorder. It's so important to inspire the young scientists, the young postdoctoral fellows and to really give them the support and mentorship to bring them to become the leaders of ALS in the future. So we're thrilled to have so many um, good fellows at uh, Mayo Clinic that we can support and look forward to supporting more in the future. So funding from the ALS Association is quite important for, for all of the ALS researchers. Um, in particular, in my case, I received funding as a, a Milton Safenowitz Research Fellow, and it was um, critical to the, to the project that I was pursuing. Essentially, what I was looking at is identifying biomarkers for ALS. So a biomarker is a protein that might be abnormally present in blood or spinal fluid of an ALS patient, and they're used to monitor disease, pro disease progression or determine whether or not someone does have a disease. And a biomarker for ALS does not yet exist, but it's very important that we find one. One of the reasons being is that we do need a more quick and efficient um, way to diagnose people with ALS. Currently, uh, ALS diagnosis is pretty much um, a, di a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning we have to exclude other diseases that might present with the same symptoms as ALS. And if we did have a biomarker and we could easily um, determine who has the disease, this was, will help with the best clinical management of the patient. So if we can show that there is some type of seeding and propagation going on uh, within our animals, uh, it'd be a, a, a way to uh, potentially target uh, some of this misfolding and aggregation that's going on in the patients through uh, certain immunological um, techniques in order to stop uh, and prevent that seeding and aggregation of SOD1 within certain individuals that, uh, that have ALS. So it would be a good target uh, to prevent that, that action from occurring within the central nervous system and causing that detrimental disease.